Rovers and KSP are widely regarded as being janky and unreliable, and if you've ever used them yourself, especially on planets with lower gravity, you'll see why. They have a truly infuriating tendency to skid around like they're on ice, and can be incredibly easy to flip over, with sometimes even the slightest turn being enough to send your Kerbals careening to their death. However, there are ways to make them slightly easier to deal with, and in this video, I want to show you how you can regain traction, so to speak. Let's begin. First of all, there is the design of your rover itself to consider. What does it look like? Is it top-heavy? Does it have a narrow profile? If you answered yes to either of these questions, consider changing it. Giving your rover a low center of mass in a wide base is one of the easiest and best things you can do to increase its reliability, and will make it much harder to flip over. As someone who has literally driven around every single celestial body in the stock game, there's absolutely no way I would have been able to do it had my rover been top-heavy. Just to illustrate this a bit further, here you can see me running a test of two rovers in which I drove both of them up to a speed of 25 meters per second before turning left as hard as I could. As you can see, the rover that is much taller flips over very easily, while the shorter rover is able to take the turn with no problems. Okay, I get it. You most likely already knew that first tip. Now let's shift our focus to the rover's wheels. How can we make them not suck? Remember how I mentioned rovers skidding around like they're on ice earlier? This occurs because the wheels are not getting enough friction with the ground. In order to remedy this, simply right-click on the rover and set the friction control slider to a higher value. For lower gravity worlds, I recommend setting it to at least 5, but you can definitely go higher if you want to. Now, however, you may still notice that the rover is still driving pretty slow, and that is because its drive limiter is too low. In order to get more wheel power, simply set the drive limiter to override, and increase this slider to your desired value, usually 100%. Now let's test this rover again. As you can see, it now accelerates much more quickly, and it's thus much more practical for actually driving. One thing to note, however, is that setting this too high on low gravity worlds can result in your rover's front end pitching up, and the rover flipping over, so uh, be careful with that. This one is more in regards to getting air time with your rovers. After landing a jump, rovers have a tendency to spin out of control and crash. In order to fix this, you need to land the rover in such a way that all of your wheels hit the ground at roughly the same time. The easiest way to achieve this is by using reaction wheels, which you can see I've put plenty of on my command modules here. Normally on a different or smaller rover I would include a reaction wheel module, but in this case it wasn't really necessary. I like to use one or two and set them to about 20% power to control my rover mid-jump. Of course, though, you can't always land every jump perfectly, and sooner or later you're going to fly off course and crash. In order to mitigate the damage, use a roll cage of sorts. Place parts such as small landing gears, grip pads, and landing legs around your rover to absorb the impact. All of these parts have very high impact tolerances and are thus great at protecting your rover during a crash. Let's perform a little crash test to see how well it works. And by crash test, I mean let's tumble down a crazy huge mountain on Tylo at maximum speed. And... well... I mean it's holding up, it's, it's definitely less damage than it would have been otherwise, alright? If I hadn't had this roll cage, I would have been absolutely dead. Of course though, now I can't get back up, and that just goes back to me wanting more reaction wheels. Oh yeah, another benefit of adding reaction wheels to rovers is that if you manage to flip over like I have here, you can more easily right yourself and overcome the force of gravity holding you down. Of course though, on Tylo, I'm not going to be able to do that, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Similarly to how we overrode the drive limiter earlier, we can also override the steering limiter, but in this case we actually want less steering as opposed to more, as rovers in KSP have a tendency to steer way more than they actually need to, especially in low gravity, so if we turn this down, we can steer much more aggressively without worrying about flipping over. Bruh. Anyways, I hope this little tutorial helps make rovers a little bit less frustrating in the future. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.